Thank you, Lord. You can welcome seven people. You know the drill, seven people. Welcome seven people and, and then you take your seat. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We give God praise. We give God praise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. I'd like to thank everyone who were able to make it for the convention. 29 years of God's faithfulness. We give God praise. Next year is 30 years of Global Harvest Church International. What a shock, what glory. Those who couldn't go there, I'm sure you joined online. It was awesome. It was powerful. We give God praise. It's dominion. It's a season of dominion. I will bring that dominion back home today. I'll, talk, I'll preach on that a little bit more in the second service. But in this first service, just following what the Lord started to share with me early this morning, I just want to stay a little bit more and talk about land ownership. You know, I'll begin to think about it because we have more or less reached a, 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 a conclusion of most parts of the discussion. The property we have seen to buy for the church, we've concluded on 1.4 billion. Yeah. Yes. Yes. We have concluded on 1.4 billion. They need 50% to lock it down. 700 million is what they're asking for. And I don't know if that's why the Lord began to tell me about land ownership because when I look back at some of the funds that have come in, they were not people, the, the big funds that have come in that give us the confidence to sit at a table of negotiation to discuss 1.4 billion. They didn't come from people's salaries. You see, you have to get it. <laughs> when the Lord says, see, when we started this business service and the Lord gave a clear instruction, very clear, okay, I also went to pray. It's not enough to say, let's do two services, one is business service. Lord, what is your intention? Went to the place of prayer. And the Lord said, I'll raise billionaires. I'll raise billionaires. Okay? And he said, it will be through multiple streams of income. That's why we started to demystify salaries. When a salary earner hears 1.4 billion, his heart will cut. That's the truth. How much do you earn? How much do you earn? His heart will cut. That's the truth. And the Lord began to talk about store of values, true land and property ownership. When he began to say those things, they are all now connecting. Some of the biggest monies we have received towards a church building fund were from property. Yeah. It's been people selling land and giving. Selling house and giving. Selling buildings and giving. Those are the big monies that we have seen. We've seen some giving, tens of millions as well, who probably may not be process of land, process of business. But we've never really seen tens of millions from salaries. We need to break it. We need to break it. And that's what the Lord wants to do. And I was talking with Rev in, 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 in the bathroom. Spent some little time talking to him, asking him questions. And he was telling me how, I, I think he also mentioned it during the pastor's retreat, how Reverend Sam started this to teach on business for five years consistently. And at the time, he looked at it, there was an explosion. The same thing will happen here. Amen. 
you, we give in hundreds of millions. I'm telling you the truth. You, we give in hundreds of millions. You, we give. I've seen people used to give in tens, thousand, twenty thousand. They're not giving 100,000. I've seen people used to give 100,000. They're not giving 1 million. And I'm excited. But we need more of you to give in hundreds of millions. Give a 100 million. 700 million deposits. Seven people. Seven people. Seven people. <laughs> I was listening to that tape that, um, I, mean to, I mean to the message that Pastor Fola shared with me. Um, and, and Pastor Adiboye was talking about the time they were raising some money at, um, at Rema Bible College. He went for a Kenneth Hagin camp meeting. And someone stood up and said, whatever everybody here will give, I will double it. He doesn't yet know what they will give, oh. Whatever all of you will give, I'll double it. <laughs> Guess how much they raised? They raised $3.5 million. And the guy came up and said, is that all all of you here can give? <laughs> and he said, he went to the man himself. Pastor Adibo went to the man after service and said, please, I, I want to know your secrets. <laughs> Do you know what the man told him, sir? He said, I pay 90% tight. <laughs> and Bishop Adibo was saying, 10% tight is not enough. It's kindergarten. You can't be there shouting dominion, dominion, and, and, and you are struggling to pay 10% tight. You are not ready. You are not ready. You are not ready. He gave four keys. Praise violently. Give violently. V violent praise, violent giving. Violent evangelism and violent prayer. I will listen to that thing over and over again because many life stories there challenged me as well. But I know that as long as the Lord will live, if he gave us the mandate to do it, he will confirm his word. He will confirm his word. He will confirm his word. When I say you confirm his word, you should know that you are the one I'm talking about. The billionaires, you raise them from here. In the name of the Lord Jesus, you raise them from here. They were telling us, a few of you must have seen the, the, the latter part of it, but at the pastor's conference, they were telling us, you know, for years, HQ was struggling with ACs for that auditorium. Until a family came and paid for it. The ACs cost 120 million. Plus another 20 million for installation. A family took it on. I have heard, I don't know how true it is, when I visited the Glory Dome, because I like to do that. Just the way I visited Kinalan, those days. Just want to go to places where things are happening, to draw inspiration. And I heard about the Glory Dome in Abuja, a hundred thousand seater. And one of the days I was in Abuja, I told the driver, please take me there, I want to see. And I went there. I was looking at the glory of the Lord. And I later learned that the air conditioning cost a billion naira for air conditioning. 
One man gave his hand. Preacher was talking about the highest prophet of India has ever received. A million dollars. Driving in difficult times, I gave us five keys. The last two keys I finished in seven minutes. And I said, no. I really wanted to spend some more time on those kids today so we can really wrap it up properly. Before the Lord began to move in this direction I'm going. I may still find five minutes and still touch on them, but, but if you remember, we spoke about go back to the altar. Remember that? Number two was what? Number one was what? Number two is what? Number two is what? Number two is what? <laughs> you know people come to church as if they are brain and taking everything. Yes, they don't take notes. They don't go back to review the notes. You teach the word, they shout amen, they go. They think that's the end. You don't take those words and mutter them, meditate on them. You mutter them, you mutter them. And as you mutter them, the Lord will start giving you instructions. The answer to prayer is usually an instruction. But people go to pray and they expect things to start to move. It's not always that happens. Even while they are moving, the Lord will tell you where to position and where to go and who to speak to. Many times, answer to prayer is instruction. So you have to keep your ears open. You have to take notes. You have to go back at those notes and Eat, of, eat them over and over again in the place of prayer. That is how the word of God benefits. Go back to your altar. Number two, stay the course. Don't give up. Number three is what? Keep sowing. Keep sowing. Number three, raise your expectations. Don't limit yourself. Number four, hold fast to your confession. Last week, no, last week we were at the Badon for the convention. The week before, I was also at the Badon. That was, that, that was a business trip. We went to see some clients. And we went into an office. Perhaps the biggest poultry business or the biggest poultry producer in Nigeria. It's a multinational. They're into poultry. We went to that office to meet with the management team. And when we arrived, they told us, oh, please hold on. Our boss is talking to his boss. He's having a meeting with his boss, so please just hold on. And we held on. Waited and waited. And then the guy who is our link, because always you need an influencer, right? The guy who is our link to the company now came, came to me. Okay, through my colleagues, you know, at Ibadan who know him, they must have told him, oh, that's our boss that came from Lagos. So... He came to me and he said, Sir, I, I hear you are a pastor, so I can say this to you. He said, My boss is in the place of prayer. His boss that he's meeting with is God. He said, he said, he said Once he goes into that mood, nobody disturbs him. Nobody. He says, sir, please just hold on. There is nothing I can do. There is nothing anybody can do. The CEO of a multinational. Do you know what? We waited a while and left. Because it didn't come out. He wasn't done with his boss. Please hear me well. Things don't just happen, sir. 
things don't just happen. <laughs> things don't just happen. Tell your neighbor, things don't just happen. They don't just happen. There's a word I want you to take away. I want you to take this word away. Um, today, connecting to the prayer and the grace that we spoke about earlier. Okay, Jeremiah chapter number 32. Please let me bring that up, media. We'll come to it very shortly. I want to read a portion of scripture to you there. But concerning land ownership, maybe I should say one or two more things to you. Instruction number one, there is a land somewhere that you can afford now. Go and buy it. Don't say it's far. Don't say it's in the bush. It could be in your hometown. Go and buy it. That's instruction number one, sir. Property people will tell you, perhaps Pastor Shegu will tell you, because he's also into that. They will tell you, don't wait to buy land. Do what? Buy land and wait, sir. Don't wait if you can afford a land in Nikaja GRA. Don't wait if you can afford a land in Shonibari Estate. Don't wait. The land that someone sold and gave some millions that I spoke about last week. It was bought for 450,000 Naira. Put in the market for 18 million. <laughs> got an offer of 12 million, 15. First, they got 12, I'm not interested. They got 15, I'm not interested. It's 18 million, I will sell this land. <laughs> Eventually, sold the land for 19 million. And pay tight of 1.9 million. That's the one I was telling you. That's the biggest tight that person has, has ever paid. Person was saying, Pastor, if